when you're talking about the consumption of social media, when you're talking about the input, because there are two separate topics here. A person that constantly feels the need to check their Twitter, check their Facebook, go online, see what's going on, look up on other people's news feeds, and it's, and it's really creepy how obsessed we are with other people's lives. And subhanAllah, I remember one time I took a group of students on a retreat, and we went to a beach, and we, were, we had like this, this penthouse on the beach, and there was no one else in the building, subhanAllah, it was off season. And it was one of the most beautiful things you could ever see. I mean, you wake up and you're just surrounded by this panoramic view of the Gulf of Mexico. And it's, it's really one of those like SubhanAllah places, right? You guys here in the Northeast don't see much of that. All right, I'm not going to diss you guys the way that Imam Suhaib did, but just that beautiful scenery, right? And so I was just observing what everyone would do. So we were like 20 guys laid out across this penthouse and just windows everywhere and the ocean everywhere. And I was just trying to see what everyone would do when they woke up. And what do you think everyone did as soon as they opened their eyes? Like before they could even fully open their eyes, they were like... They're looking at their phones, like that's how they wake up for Salah. Right away, just clicking, 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 clicking. I'm like, God, you guys don't realize the scenery that's around you. You don't realize the beauty that you're in right now because you're so busy looking up what other people are doing right now. And subhanAllah, that to me represents the disease of consumption. So I'm just going to talk about that, consuming that material, consuming that constant news feed, consuming all of that stuff that's online, constantly bombarding yourself, bombarding your soul, bombarding your heart, your mind, polluting yourself with that stuff. And then there's the output part, there's the giving part. Right? And subhanAllah, when it, you know, they're both related to the same disease. First and foremost, and I want to look at it from a spiritual perspective. When you constantly feel the need to consume something, be it you know, your social media, be it your TV. You know, there are a lot of people that can't sleep unless their TVs are on or unless they're playing something on YouTube. Like you're not able to sleep unless you've got your phone out in front of you or you're on your laptop and you just pass out in front of your laptop or whatever it is that you're doing. Whatever it may be. That in and of itself means that you're unable to be alone with yourself. And subhanAllah, you know, I've, I've had people say that to me before and I get it. And it's, and it's a way that some people try to deal with trauma. You know, and, and I'm guilty of it. When I went through one of the most traumatic periods of my life, I constantly had to have something playing in the background. I was like looking for, for the sounds of sleep and whatever it may be. I had to have something to distract me from myself. And that was very interesting and it was because I saw myself guilty of it. And that's something that, you know, in this day and age, we can't do without social media to the extent that we would rather have it than have electricity. I want you to imagine this. If you had a choice right now for the power to go out or for your phones to go out and your social media to go out, would you rather the power go out and you could still tell the world about how much your life sucks because the power went out? Or would you rather have power and not have the internet and not have social media and not have any connection to the world? Right? Like we need that. Like you see people sitting in waiting rooms, you know, at, at doctor's offices or at clinics and they're waiting to be called in. And when you don't have signal on your phone, how crazy does it drive you? Right? Just why isn't it coming up? Why isn't this working? And if your phone dies, it's like, it's like you have to be supervised at that point to make sure you don't do anything to hurt yourself, right? You start looking at the fishes inside the doctor's clinic and you're like, hmm, I didn't know those were there, right? But we just constantly need to be consuming something. And that's dangerous in and of itself for two reasons. Number one, the fact that you need to consume. Number two, what you're consuming. So you might not be guilty of the second one, but being guilty of the first one. The need to be busy with something other than Allah and yourself. And Imam Hassan Basri says, من علامات إعراض الله تعالى عن العبد أن يشغله في ما لا يعني. One of the signs of spiritual abandonment is when you are just busy with everything that doesn't concern you, busy with everything but yourself, busy with everything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unable to be alone with your thoughts. And then secondly, obviously, what you're consuming. And you know, you might just be passing over certain things, but it's all harming you. It's all getting to you in some way, shape or form. It's all penetrating the soul, penetrating the mind, penetrating the heart some way. And then comes the output piece of this. And subhanAllah, you know, you constantly have these studies which I think are flawed because they don't distinguish between people about people that use social media more frequently being more likely to be depressed, for example. 
And there's some truth to that sometimes because if you constantly feel the need to just, you know, out, put things out there, trying to turn people's faces toward, towards you, trying to gain the attention of everyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like you're just sitting there constantly tweeting, posting, tweeting, posting, tweeting, posting, right? Doing all the other stuff. In essence, it represents a greater disease that you're trying to get the attention of others. Seek Allah's sight. Don't seek the sight of people. Seek Allah's sight. Instead of trying to just put everything out there until someone catches on and it becomes popular and you become an instant sensation. Instead of doing that, try to spend some time seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And Imam Suhaib mentioned the daily dhikr part of this. And you know, I just tell people this and, and, I'm, and I'm saying it to myself first. Do you know how amazing it feels to take 30 minutes out? Like not 30 minutes by yourself when you've got your phone on. And it's not necessarily if you're reading Quran, just 30 minutes away from it all. Half an hour sitting with yourself, you know, doing something that you have to do. Do you know how amazing that feels? And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us in many ways in this day and age. And obviously the fitna that the Sahaba had of persecution and things of that sort, we don't have that level of fitna. We don't have that level of trial and tribulation. But when the Prophet ﷺ talks about a time coming, that holding on to our faith would be like holding on to burning hot coals. The Prophet ﷺ is referring to the fitna of temptation. Desire. Why? Because when you used to have to do something haram, you used to have to go to the club where haram ko. Right? All those stories that you guys see on the highways and stuff like that where you've got to go to get that material. Okay? You know, you used to have to go somewhere to get haram. You used to have to go somewhere to consume it. Now it's just here. Now you can pull up all kinds of stuff. Now you've got it on HBO and you've got it on your phone. You don't have to go anywhere. You can find it in your room. And the danger of that is that it tests your muraqaba, it tests your sense of observance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to an extreme. In a way that those that came before you didn't have to be tested. You are constantly under bombardment. And don't think that Allah doesn't notice when you ignore that. Think about that reward. I don't want to depress you guys. Don't think Allah is not pleased with you. And Allah doesn't notice when you're able to resist that temptation, even when you're all alone. And if you're not someone that's able to resist it, then aspire for that. Like how amazing is that? How much do I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That even in the privacy of my own home, even in the privacy of my room, even in these own devices with everything constantly being thrown at me, I'm still able to say, oh Allah, it's not just one woman. You know, or, or one man, because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned one of the people under the shade of Allah's throne as being someone that was called by a woman, and it applies to a man as well, of great beauty and status. فَقَالَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهِ And they said, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not being called by one woman or one man, are you? You're constantly being called. And you're able to put that down and say, no, I'm afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love Allah more than I love this. I love Allah more than I love this. And that's something to aspire to, right? I'm not here to just break you people down. Just think about it. That's a testimony to your faith. Oh Allah, I'm going to do this because you mean more to me. No one else is looking at me, but I want you to look at me favorably. And that's something there. And when you constantly have to post things out there, and when you constantly have to consume things out there, both of them represent that spiritual void. So that's number one. Number two. A very beautiful statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu that's narrated by Malik ibn Dinar and it's, it's an authentic and it's a beautiful narration. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Man kathura kalamuhu kathura saqtu. Whoever talks too much makes too many mistakes. And the idea here is that, you know, you used to have one way of expressing yourself. Right through your tongue and maybe you could write letters back then or you could write, you could write your poetry or whatever it was. Like, you know, you used to have very few ways to express yourself. Now all of a sudden this power has been placed in all of our laps where we're able to express ourselves in so many different ways. I mean, you could, you could express yourself through your tongue, you could express it through your text message, you could express it through your email, you could expre express it through your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever it may be. You have all of these tongues where you can express yourself and you can put stuff out there. And hence the, the, the possibility of committing a sin or making a mistake becomes much greater. 
and the reward for practicing silence also becomes much greater. It's very easy to get ourselves in a lot of trouble now. And look, no, you know, at least I can speak for myself that no one is in greater danger of that than me. And the people that are constantly, you know, at conferences like this speaking and people whose words are looked to because, you know, it's not like I can go back and take some of the things I said back because everything gets recorded and put up on YouTube. Everything gets preserved, right? And subhanAllah, the danger of making those mistakes becomes even greater because they're enshrined. You're stuck with them. And so the burden of responsibility with your words and the things that you write and the things that you type and the things you put out there becomes greater. And all of those ahadith where the Prophet ﷺ talks about practicing silence all of a sudden become more relevant. And you know, I'm not just talking about, um, you know, going off on somebody or responding to a comment or backbiting and things of that sort. I'm just talking about talking about everything. When the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the three types of people, abghadakum ilayya, the most hated of you to me and the furthest of you from me on the day of judgment, the first category the Prophet ﷺ mentioned was atharfarun. Atharfarun al-mutashaddiqun al-mutafayhiqun. Atharfarun, those are people that have to have an opinion on absolutely everything. Whether you're qualified or not, you say something. You have to say something. You have to give your input. As if anyone cares, right? Hashtag nobody cares. As if anyone cares about your opinion on what's going on in this part of the world or that part of the world or so on and so forth or on this issue, you have to say something. And you don't consider much of it, right? And the Prophet ﷺ says, Al-'ajalatu min shaytan Haste is from the shaytan, you know, doing things really quickly, not, not saying things in a calculated way, not doing things in a calculated way, just constantly putting it out there. And so, you put out these words and these statements, and when you keep on putting it out, if the volume of your speech, and when I, I don't mean like as, as far as the noise level, if the amount of writing you have out there and the amount of words you have out there is greater, then you're naturally going to make more mistakes. So you have to be more responsible with the means of expression that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. So, man kathura kalamuhum kathura saqtu. And then he said, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, وَمَنْ كَثُرَ سَقْتُهُ قَلَّ حَيَاءَهُ This is the next level, the next phase that Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu mentions. Number one, if you talk too much, you make too many mistakes. And when you make too many mistakes, your modesty will wither away. قَلَّ حَيَاءَهُ I want you to think about this. What usually happens when a person starts to put too much out there? Do people gain respect for them or lose respect for them? Usually they lose respect for them. Usually some of those sins that Allah blessed His servants to hide start to come out. Right? Some things that you wouldn't have expected of a person. Or the way that they start to speak, if they speak too much, you know, it's only a matter of time before they're caught on their bad day. And even if it's not their character, when they type that day, and, and you don't see it, you just see the tweet, you just see the Facebook status as someone who's consuming it. You don't see what happened to that person that day. Maybe they had a fight with their spouse. Maybe they got into it with their kids. Maybe they had a flat tire at work today. And you don't see that when they comment on something, but you know what, it's there. It's there for all of us. And so what ends up happening though, our modesty, starts to be lost either in the way that we speak or the things we put out there. We start to expose things of ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept hidden. وَمَنْ قَلَّ حَيَاؤُهُ قَلَّ وَرَعَهُ Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu continues. He says, when your modesty starts to shrink, then your caution starts to shrink. Your filter goes away. Right? The modesty was the guard, that hayat that the Prophet ﷺ says, al hayat min al-Iman, that modesty is a form of faith. Modesty is lifted. When modesty is gone, the filter is gone too. And so when the filter is gone, it's just, it's, it's just all over the place. There is no caution in what you write and what you put out there. وَمَنْ قَلَّ وَرَعُهُ and whoever starts to lose that caution and that filter and staying away from haram and staying away from doubtful matters and, and, and you know, not maintaining that filter, mata qalbuhu, His heart dies. So subhanAllah, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu is taking you from a place where you just talk too much to a place of the death of the heart to show you there is a direct relationship between the two. There is a direct relationship with how much you talk 
to the life of your heart, to whether it's going to be sick or whether it's going to die. Because we stop considering the things that we put out there. And it's really important for us to understand. Sometimes you put out a message even when you don't intend to put out a message. I'll give you guys an example. You write something and, you know, and in your writing, you give off the indication that you engage in something haram. You engage in something that's prohibited. Somebody else looks at that. And naturally, that sin has become more normalized to them. It's become humanized. Well, you know what? Other people do it too. Other people do that too. You naturally normalized it for someone else. And you, you know, subhanAllah, there, that's where the picture that you put out, the, the, the wording that you put out, as human beings, we're very complex creatures, right? Nothing is black and white. The same picture that you put out might give off a thousand different messages based on the person that's reading it. And you can't control all of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wasa'aha. Allah is not going to burden you beyond your scope. You can't control how everyone is going to interpret everything that you say. You can't. If you could, then the mashayikh would be in the greatest trouble. And dua, people of da'a would be in the greatest trouble. Because sometimes a shaykh or a da'i will put out a well-intentioned, good message, positive message, and it'll be interpreted in the nastiest ways. You can't help that. But at least what you can control is that when you're writing something, when you're putting up a picture, when you're making a reference, when you're saying something, you are not the cause of someone else's waswasa. You're not the cause of someone else's whispers. It's one thing, and, and be honest with yourself, when you go online and you see on your social media certain people that you look up to, your brother, your sister, the guy at the masjid, the, the sister at the masjid, saying something or doing something or putting up a picture, that you, know, you were a little bit uncomfortable with at first. Did it not affect you? Did it not cause whispers to start going off in your own head and all of a sudden things to be okay? In the same way, don't be the cause of waswasa for someone else. Don't be the cause of the whispers for someone else, right? لا يؤمن أحدكم No one of you believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. You don't like that when that happens to you. You're trying to maintain your spirituality. Don't corrupt someone else. And you know, I remember there was a brother that was, uh, you know, I, I, I went to him and I advised him. I was like, look, you know, I know you're struggling with certain things. I know you're trying to get over certain things. But you know, you don't have to put out all of these pictures. You don't have to expose yourself that way. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that you know, the person that wouldn't be forgiven on the Day of Judgment is someone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concealed during the day and they went and exposed themselves during the night. Like why would you do that? Allah provided a cover for you. Why go out there and blast your sins? And you know what he answered me? I'm not even making this up. He said, but Shaykh, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm like wait, what? I'm not a hypocrite. I do these things, why should I hide them? I'm like, I understand, but not being a hypocrite and not boasting about your sins are two different things, right? It's one thing to say that I'm not going to get online and lecture people about things that I myself do. Telling others to do what you yourself don't do. That's hypocrisy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to appreciate when you will get online and you'll say, because I'm not a hypocrite, I'm not going to hide me. I'm going to do me. I'm going to put it all out there. Why should I hide it? That's another type of hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're still willing to insult the rulings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala publicly without filter, you're just willing to put it all out there. That's also a form of hypocrisy. You know, Abdullah al-Mubarak rahimahullah ta'ala, he said the hypocrites in the time of the Prophet sallallahu at least they had the decency to hide their hypocrisy. Now people don't even hide their hypocrisy. They just put it on blast. And sometimes it's not even you telling someone else to do something haram. How many of you have heard the story of Cain and Abel? Qabil and Habil, the two sons of Adam alayhi salam. Let me ask you guys a question. First of all, who killed two? Did Cain kill Abel or did Abel kill Cain? There's a problem here. <laughs> you guys don't know. Okay? The older brother killed the younger brother, Cain, Abel. The Prophet ﷺ, he tells us in an authentic hadith. He says, لا تقتل نفس ظلما. No person is killed unjustly. No person is killed unjustly. Except that the older son of Adam alayhi salam takes a share of that blood. 
Why? لِأَنَّهُ أَوَّلُ مَنْ سَنَّ الْقَتْلِ He's the first person to kill. Now, he didn't go out and put out a Facebook status or tell everyone else like, Hey guys, I just killed my brother. You should try it too. It's not what he did. What did he do though? He normalized it. He was the first one to make this okay. So when you've corrupted your own fitrah, when you've messed up yourself, and you don't seek that forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private, but instead you, you put it on blast, and you make references that would cause others to have those whispers. You're normalizing it for that person. You might have a share of that sin as well. Especially again, if that person is vulnerable at the moment that they're reading your status, or your tweet, or they're seeing your social media output. And so yes, be responsible with what you put out there. Be responsible with the things that you write. Be responsible with the things that you say. Be responsible with the impressions that you give. Cover yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covered you. You don't have to expose yourself and there is no bravery or courage in doing so. At least give yourself a chance that even though you're weak, that Allah sees you on the day of judgment and says, look, I know you were weak, but at least you felt bad about being weak. At least you felt bad about it. At least you weren't boasting about it, right? And a lot of times, subhanAllah, I, I tell people this all the time, look, you can't delete your past, but you can delete your past on social media. Even leaving things up there from the days of Jahiliyyah, right? Don't be that cause of fitna for other people. Now, on the bright side of things, because I already got the five minute warning. You know, subhanAllah, just last night, actually this morning, I just came from North Carolina, and I know tomorrow, inshaAllah ta'ala, I have a session on our three winners, speaking about liyat yusur and razan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them. And may Allah give steadfastness to their families. How many of you know about the three winners in North Carolina? How many of you have read that story? How many of you were impacted by it? Why? Not just because three people were killed unjustly, but because it's clear that they were good young people. They were people that were doing great things. They were people that were using whatever platform Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to them to do amazing things. Whether it was putting on a charity campaign online, or calling people to volunteer, or showing their care, they were people that put out goodness. Now, do you think that when Liat was putting up his $20,000 GoFundMe campaign for his, for his project, and I'm going to talk about this tomorrow, that it, would become, that it would have a global impact and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make that platform so great that it would earn up to almost a million dollars? Do you think he knew that? Do you think that those three knew that the tweets that they put out about the unity of the community, about, about people's hearts being united, about pride in the hijab in the case of Yusur and how she puts herself on the line every day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you think they knew that those tweets were going to go all over the world? They had no idea. Now, the point of this is that just as all of this power that we all have now, this, these, these modes of expression that we have now, are means of us ruining ourselves at time. They're also pretty incredible ways of spreading good. Afshu salam. Spread peace. Spread peace. Not just by saying salamu alaikum to one another, by the way. Spread good. You have so many means now. And you don't know when that, that one ayah that you put up, that one hadith that you put up, that one you know, scholar's quote that you quoted, that one good project, because I want you guys to think higher than just retweeting and posting, that one good thing that you put up, that one reminder that you put up, that one project you worked on, you don't know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make out of that. You have no idea whatsoever. You have no idea how many people you're going to touch. You have no, many, no idea how many people you're going to impact. You know, subhanAllah, I just got back from Malaysia on Wednesday night. I met a sister in Malaysia, and there are many of these stories. If you talk to Imam Suhaib, if you talk to Sister Susie, if you go talk to Ustad Nu'man or Sheikh Abdul Nasser, you're going to hear a million stories about people that turned out to be touched by something they did, and you had no idea whatsoever. You met them years later. SubhanAllah, there is a lady from China that walked up to me in the convention in Malaysia, and she was a Christian missionary and she was, doing, she was arguing with atheists. So she went online looking for arguments against atheists. And she landed on the beginning and the end series, the Al-Bidai wa Nihaya series, the arguments against atheism. She watched it to video 15, she took shahada. That wasn't me, that was Allah. That wasn't me. 
That was Allah. Allah guides the hearts to whatever direction He wants to guide them based upon something He sees in those hearts and in the desires of those people. You never know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might direct the right heart to your platform because of the goodness that was in your heart when you did what you did. You never know. You never know how many people you would touch or you never know who you will touch that will touch many people. And all of that will be from your scale of good deeds. Now, in conclusion here, I don't want you to think for a moment. You know, one thing that, as uh, uh, you know, the few things that I've already heard in this convention, when you listen to, you know, our, our uh, you know, those people that really laid the foundations for the da'wah in North America, the things that they used to do. And to be honest with you, I'm not that old. The things, I remember, you know, going out every Sunday with the Y Islam pamphlets and putting them on people's, you know, doors and things of that sort every Sunday morning and the da'wah that you have to do in the streets and so on and so forth. Social media never becomes a replacement for them. Don't think that social media ever absolves you of grassroots work, of actually doing good. It's one thing to tweet, to retweet, to post, to say something good. And a good word is appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you still have to go out there and make your story, not just tweet your story. Seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hoping that Allah accepts. And if Allah accepts, you never know what will become of that which you've done. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all sincerity and to make us responsible with that which He's been given, which He's given to us, and to allow us to protect and guard our own fitra, our own goodness that He's that He's placed inside of us, and to protect us from the whispers of Shaytan when we're constantly bombarded by them, and to protect us from being those that cause Shaytan to whisper to them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us when we when we uh, when we allow those shortcomings to overcome us and to harm the da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reform ourselves and to reform those around us. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.